Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our August Town Hall. We've been doing these now for a little bit over a year at this point, and it's always great to see a lot of familiar names on the registration. So we thank you for continuing to, continuing to come back and hearing more from our president and CEO, Craig Leonard. Uh, so before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit about Craig. Craig has been in the banking industry for over 28 years, and he joined the credit union in 2010 as our chief financial officer. And in 2020, last year, he became our, our president and CEO. And today we, we're going to do us the same for anyone that hasn't attended one of our town halls in the past. What we're doing is the same as in the past. It, essentially, we are going through and we're going to answer the questions that you've submitted. So if there are any questions that you, that you recognize, thank you for submitting them. If you did not have a chance to submit the questions, then please go ahead and you can submit them throughout today's presentation. And for those that may not be as familiar with how today's webinar works and sort of the logistics of it, we have gone ahead and muted everyone. That just makes it easier so that you can hear any questions that are asked. Uh, that way, also, if you're at home and maybe you have little ones or if you have a dog or maybe you're just at lunch and don't want your background noise to be heard, do not worry. You can continue to do as you'd like today and we will not hear that. However, we do want to hear from you so that we still want this to be engaging. So please, just to test it out, let's start with one question, which is how long have you been a member? And for those of you that want to add a little bit more, maybe let us know where are you joining us from today? So please, in the chat, let us know how long have you been a member and where are you joining us from? This helps us know that you can hear us, that you can submit questions, and you're able to do this by using the questions panel. So please let us know how long have you been a member? Okay, so we have some people that say 15 years, some people said 2018. <laughs> Greetings from Long Island. Wonderful, and I did say, see someone that 25 years, wonderful. I think the person for 25 years is currently the one winning for having been a member for the longest. Thank you. Yes, New York State, thank you so much. So please continue to submit questions this way. We also are recording today's session, so you'll be able to have access to it and you'll be able to access it on our YouTube channel as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn my video off and really turn it over to Craig, who's gonna be answering your questions. Thanks, Magdalia. Hi everyone, it's glad, glad to be back and doing this again. Thank you, Craig. So to get us started, the first question that we have for you is, how can HBCU help with student loan forgiveness and refinancing? Yeah, so there's, there's, there's kind of two questions here. We'll start with the first part, which is the student loan forgiveness uh, question. You know, um, there's been a lot of, um, press out there regarding student loan forgiveness. And, and it's really been with federal student loans, more so than what we do here at the credit union, which is private student lending. Um, at the student loan, uh, at the student, at the federal level rather, um, you hear a lot of conversations coming out from the Biden administration that they may forgive up to $10,000 worth of, of student loans. There is a, there's a senators out there who would love to see that amount increase to about a $50,000 level. Um, as of now, um, nothing's nothing's been done at the federal level in terms of that student loan forgiveness. Um, but again, that is separate than what we do here at the credit union, which is, which is private student lending. Um, and so we don't have any specific um, loan forgiveness program around our student loans. Um, but I will say that if you are a student loan borrower, if you're having challenges making payments, um, the best thing that you can do is to reach out to our student loan team. Um, we've worked with a number of, of our members in helping them navigate the repayment of their student loans. Um, we don't take a cookie cutter approach. We handle each situation uh, um, uh, on a case by case uh, is issue. We know that your situation can be very different than another borrowers and so the best thing to do is to is to start and reach out contact our student loan team let us help you 
um, we can help you with with a, a number of different things in terms of restructuring your loan. Um, the thing that we want to do more than anything else is make that student loan um, affordable for you. So, um, so I would do that first and foremost. From a refinancing standpoint, the student, the, the credit union does do student loan um, refinancing. We do that for loans outside of what we have originated. So if you have federal student loans, if you have other private student loans with other institutions, um, come take a look at us. I mean, we have some exceptional rates. We've actually moved our rates uh, lower this year uh, to really uh, to really make them um, attractive to our members. Um, I think our rates are as low as you know 3.25%, um, and we have um, a lot of different term options available for you. Um, I had mentioned that we generally do not refinance our own student loans. It is something that we are taking another look at. Um, you know, what we want to do is really make these loans more affordable for our entire membership. Um, we're in the process of reviewing that that policy that we've had. Um, so in the interim, I would say that if, if you're interested in looking at your loans, seeing what we can do, you know, please reach out to our student loan department. And they'd be more than happy to help you out. Thank you, Craig. And Sarah did put in the chat the contact information if you wanted to learn a little bit more about this educational loan and reach out to the team. And it seems like student loans is a popular topic. It usually is. And we have another student loan question that was submitted by a member. Specifically, they ask, can graduates who are visa holders, not U.S. citizens, refinance student loans? Our current policy around um, our student loan refinance program is to U.S. citizens and permanent residents who have a social security number. Um, for us to do the underwriting that we need to do, we need to have access to an individual's credit report. So having that, um, that structure in place where you're either a, a U.S. citizen um, or a permanent resident with the social security number allows us to make sure that we're doing the, uh, the proper credit um, underwriting that we need to do. Um, it's a great question. We're always uh, reevaluating our underwriting criteria. So this is one that we'll take back to our student loan team and we'll look deeper and, and see if we need to make some changes within our current structure. That's a great question. The next question is, what's the best way to transfer money internationally? Um, I'm gonna, this is one that has bothered me personally for a while, uh, you know, before I took this role, uh, while I was the CFO, um, kind of money transfers um, fell under a part of my responsibility. Um, and international wires, they're always, a, they're always quite, a, they're, they're a pain, you know? So I'll look at this from two different uh, ways. If you're sending money from the United States abroad, um, we have um, we have a wire transfer service. Um, it's, uh, it's it's effective. It does a really nice job. It's safe. It's secure. Um, you know, if you're overseas and trying to get money into the United States, you, I've heard from so many different members of how challenging that can be um, dealing with institutions abroad. One of the things that we have um, that we have utilized for some of our members um, and recommended is quite frankly some fintech companies out there uh, flywire and wise.com are, are two examples that we um, that we recommend some to our student loan uh, borrow population flywire we use them western union is another option that we that we often recommend to uh, to our international uh, membership um, it is something that I am taking a, a harder look at. Um, I think we can do a much better job here within um, our organization. And quite frankly, the, I think the entire banking industry needs to take a, a hard look at how we're transferring money. It's, um, it's a slow process. It can be an expensive process. And some of the, the, the fintech companies are doing a, a really good job out there. And so there are a few that we are looking to potentially partner with and provide a better actually experience and a, and a cheaper and faster way for you to utilize um, international transfers. The next question is, does HUCU offer Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, loans? 
We don't. You know, the credit union here um, through our history does not do lending for small uh, small business lending or commercial lending. The PPP loans are all associated with uh, uh, business lending. So uh, it is something that we um, are considering to do in the future. Uh, but as I'm now, the loans that we make are right to individuals. They're consumer loans. Uh, you know, we are largely a, um, a large mortgage lender. Um, we do a, a certainly a fair amount of student loans that we've talked about um, and other consumer loans, um, unsecured personal loans, credit cards. Those are all big parts of our loan portfolio today. Um, we do have kind of a longer term roadmap, though, to start to incorporate uh, business lending into our fold. Just not today. Our next question is one that's very popular. I know we've, Sarah and I have received it oftentimes when we give our personal finance presentations and community event, and essentially it is, what is Zelle? Yeah, so um, the person who might have submitted this question uh, might have been on online banking and they might have seen a new feature that we have out there, which is Zelle. So this is one that I've, I've talked a little bit about in the past and, um, it sounds like Medallia, you've got a number of questions too, uh, like you said, for membership. Um, people have been asking about when are we gonna offer Zelle for some time? And Zelle is a modern P2P solution. Uh, what we had previously here at the credit union, um, I would say was anything but, um, you know, we, we referred to it as pop money. Um, not a lot of our membership utilized it. Um, those that did found it, found it okay, but we knew as we kind of move forward, we need to have, we needed to have something more, more modern, uh, more easy. Um, if you're not familiar with the term Zelle, most likely you're familiar with the term Venmo. It is, um, it is pretty much identical to Venmo. It's a quick, uh, fast way that you can send money um, using information as, as simple as uh, a recipient's a cell phone number or email address, you know, and it can go to anyone who has a U.S. banking um, account here in the United States. So uh, very easy to use. We're excited to finally um, um, bring it to the membership. We actually went live with it on July 27th, and uh, I would say probably over the next month we'll um, we'll be doing a more kind of robust communication. Uh, piece to the entire membership, letting them know about Zelle, as well as a few other kind of really cool value-added um, services that we just implemented. Is credit card customer support outsourced? Yeah, this is this is one that we we get um, we get quite a bit, um, and we do use an outsourced relationship. So. Um, we're not a operations that is staffed or our contact center folks are not uh, staffed 24-7. Um, but when you have a credit card portfolio, and, and in particular, when you have a question about your credit card, you certainly don't want to have to wait for our operating hours to reach out and talk to us. Um, certainly, when we're open and you want to give us a call about your credit card, we're more than happy to, to answer you and, and help you through whatever questions you may have regarding your card. Um, but we do partner with um, with another entity that helps us with our customer support, uh, generally for um, off hours. So when you have that question, you know, Saturday evening where you might see, you know, a weird transaction, you want to call someone, you uh, you want to uh, you want to dispute the claim, whatever it, it may be, you can call that number on the back of the card, and uh, and they'll be there to support you. Um, for us, it was critical for us to have that availability for you as, uh, as our credit card holders. Another common question that we get often, especially with credit cards and all the different ways folks are now able to pay is, can HUCU cards be added to a digital wallet? Yeah, they sure can. You know, uh, more of us are using digital wallets. You know, uh, today it's um, our, our cards um, work well with Apple Pay. Uh, we are in the process right now of adding both Google Pay and Samsung Pay. Um, we're working with our technology partner. Um, we plan to have that up and available to the membership in the fourth quarter of this year. So 
um, whether you're using uh, you know an Apple, Google, or or Samsung device, um, you'll be able to to, uh, to put your uh, put your HUECU card um, in your digital wallet. wallet. With digital wallets or any other technology, there's always a concern about safety. And it looks like the member that submitted this question had that in mind. And they wanted to know, how is HUCU protecting members who have fully embraced online banking? Yeah, you know, safety in, in your privacy and, and, and keeping your information um, secure is paramount with us as an organization. Um, you know, we go through kind of numerous layers, if you will, on how we protect um, the privacy and 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 your uh, and your data. Um, one, we have our own internal kind of process that we go through um, in reviewing the technology partners that we have, uh, ensuring that they have the right uh, systems in place to protect your information. Um, we then contract with outside IT specialists who will also look at our our technology partners. Um, to make sure that they are going through the proper channels and have the correct operations in place. As a highly regulated financial institution, our regulators come in to ensure that those safeguards in are in place as well. Um, and then lastly, we have some external audits that are conducted. So we, so from start to finish, we we actually have about four layers that we go through and ensuring that all of our technology partners or whoever is is um, may have um, um, the ability to um, see your private information is fully protected. So uh, it's it's like I said, it's paramount to us. There's nothing more important than safe safeguarding your information. Thank you, Craig. And before I go on to the next question, which is the last member question that was submitted before today's webinar, I just want to remind folks, if you do have additional questions, you can feel free to submit them. Um, I do see that some have already been submitted, and Sarah Scruggs, my colleague, will ask Craig those shortly. Uh, but before we move on to the questions that have been asked live, the last question that a member submitted as part of today's town hall registration was, does HUCU have mortgages available outside of Mass? I'm so excited to say now we do. Um, for the longest time, there were state laws that prohibit us in terms of kind of our mortgage reach, our, our, how far we could extend uh, from our headquarters here in, uh, in Cambridge. In April of this year, there was a, a law that changed that eliminated some of the, um, the restrictions that we had in terms of how far out we could go. Um, we know that we have a membership that uh, lots of folks come into uh, to the university, get their education, go back home to where a home might be. Um, and we would love for them to continue their relationship um, with the credit union. And, and a mortgage is a big part of what we do, and, and, and we would love to help with that transaction. Um, as of um, August, so just this month, we are now um, able to do mortgages in uh, in all of New England. So we can, we're in Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Um, we do have on our roadmap to extend even beyond those uh, those states that I've named. Uh, but as of now, if you've got that first mortgage um, somewhere in, in 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 Vermont or Connecticut or that second home. You know, up in uh, up in Maine, and, and you're uh, thinking of refinancing or, or purchase a home. Um, think of the credit union. You know, we would love to to help you out. Thank you, Craig, and thank you again to all the members that submitted questions as part of registration. And I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague Sarah Scruggs, our community engagement specialist, who will ask a couple of questions that came in during today's session. And if folks do have additional questions, just submit them through the questions panel. Hi everyone, again, thanks so much for joining us today and thank you for submitting these questions. Um, one that came through, uh, this person knows that the Harvard Square branch is open, but they love visiting the branch closer to where they live. So they um, are wondering when the other branches might be opening. It's a great question and um, and I wish I had a, um, a definitive date that I could give you. We keep reaching out to um, 
um, the buildings in which some of those branches are located. So we're in, um, in the Longwood area, for example. Um, we're trying to get into that space, um, you know, with COVID, um, they have, um, they're very cautious of, of, of opening up the, uh, the branches as of yet. So um, we've had communications with them. We continue to do outreach to them. Uh, they know that we're eager to get it into the branches as, as, as soon as they give us the thumbs up to do so. Um, but as of right now, other than um, the Harvard Square branch, which is open, um, the branch over um, at Mass General is open. We have uh, over in the Navy Yard, we have opened up that branch with um, limited hours um, and we continue to evaluate that. But the, the, the branch over uh, in, the, in the medical area, um, as well as uh, the one over at, um, um, in Somerville, have, have yet to be reopened um, and we don't have a definitive date as of yet. Thank you, Craig. Um, another one, they said, you know, we've looks like we've been about uh, halfway through the year now. So they are wondering how is the credit union doing financially? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, we're 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 doing well. I mean, the um, the pandemic has um, you know certainly thrown all of us curveballs. Certainly here at the credit union as well. Um, but one of the, the, the things that has occurred through this is that interest rates really dropped uh, dramatically last year, and they still stay at really historic lows. Um, and what that has resulted in is just a phenomenal wave of people refinancing their mortgages in particular. Um, we've done more mortgage business uh, over the last, um, you know, call it 18 months than our entire history. I mean, normal year for us would be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of $200 million or so worth of, of, of mortgage originations. Last year, we um, we did about $400 million of originations, which was fantastic to help that many members. And right now we're on pace to do in excess of 300 million or so. So um, we're saving um, our members a lot of money by by lowering their rates uh, or providing you know cash back, you know, a lot of people are tapping into the equity that that's uh, that they now have in their homes. We've seen certainly increases in the value of 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 real estate um, significantly over the past year. So we have a number of members who are tapping into that equity to do those uh, those other home remodeling projects um, that they've been wanting to do. Put me on the list. I'm I'm doing an addition at my house right now, so I'm I'm one of those folks too who are, who have used. The, uh, the credit union to do that. Um, but financially, it's uh, it's resulted in us having a, um, a strong first six months of the year. Um, but it's it's uh, it's still a cha challenging environment. Um, you know, we're we're blessed here to have just a um, an absolutely remarkable staff that help us and help you uh, each and every day. And so um, you know we're we're doing the best we can, but financially, um, we are still one of the best performing credit unions here in the state of Massachusetts, and certainly in the top quartile of credit unions um, across the country. So I'm happy to report that. Always great to hear that we're saving our members even more money. That's always a good thing in my book, for sure. Um, but thank you so much, Craig. Those are all of the questions that came in from the people on our webinar today, and we are thankful for those. Um, and we are going to go ahead and wrap this up. Craig, is there anything that you'd like to end with or say before we um, end our webinar? The only other, uh, the, the only other, you know, I mentioned about a service that we um, that we just went live with. So. Um, for those of you who are online bank users, your FICO score is now populated out there. So we're doing this on a quarterly basis. Um, I think it's a terrific um, thing for, for you to, to look, you know, we should all be concerned about, you know, our, our credit scores. You know, your credit scores play such a critical role kind of in your, your financial life on some of the cost of, uh, of your borrowings, right? You know, so a lot of institutions. Um, will uh, adjust their rates based upon how well your, your credit score is. So we are providing that information on a quarterly basis. 
Um, so please take a look at that. It's within online banking. Um, and so we're happy to uh, to offer that 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 service to you as well. Um, other than that, I want to thank everyone certainly for tuning in today. I, I enjoy this. And what we also do from this is we learn a lot of what's of interest to you as our members. Um, you know, we've had a couple questions today about student lending that we can kind of take back and, and think of how we're doing. We talked about international transfers. Um, you know, uh, that is something I had mentioned that is important to me and in, in looking back at a better solution. So it's important for me to know that it's important to you as well. So um, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your questions, but more importantly, I appreciate your membership. So thanks again for, uh, for participating. Thank you everyone so much. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you, Craig, as well. Thank you.